Hi again, this video is going to focus on the settings you can have for your virtual classroom session. Now, in this case, I'm going to use a course room as an example. The next video will talk about the difference between a course room and a session, and we're going to see there's very little differences actually. But to get in and change the settings, what I do is click the course room, and now I'm going to click the gear, the sprockety looking symbol, the session settings area, and right away I have a few things I could do. The default role is how your participants are coming in. So your students are joining the session. Likely you want to leave this as participant, but if you had a reason, you could allow them to come in as presenters or moderators even. If you want, you can allow people to download the recording. As the instructor, you always are able to download, but you want your students to be able to. You can anonymize chat messages in the recording. During the live session, the chat is not anonymous, but in the recording, it would be. Uh, whether you want people to show profile pictures is more a personal preference. These four permissions, though, are important. It's what they can do, how they can communicate. Likely, you want them to be able to use audio, video, and post chat messages so they can actually communicate with you. But you might want to disable this option right off the bat, the drawing on the whiteboard and files. This can be a great activity, but by default, you might not want people being able to scribble all over your slides as you're presenting. It's something you can control in the session live anyway, but you might want to turn that off by default. And what you also have is the option to allow people to dial in. So if this was someone who was having trouble connecting via the internet, they could dial in. Uh, at Windsor, we do have a toll-free number, thankfully, but it is anonymous entry. And there's no way for us to check who it was who joined. So it is a kind of use at your own risk because someone could come in and if they're doing inappropriate things, we'd never know who it was. You also have some options for how you want them to be able to use private chat. Do you want them to be able to have privately chat with each other? Do you want to supervise it? Again, more of a personal preference. And finally, you could turn on a profanity filter as well if you wanted. If you're happy with the settings, you click save and it's all been updated now. Within the event details page, there is a few things as well. If I click back into there, what I have the option is the anonymous dial option, if I enable this, which I could copy and share with others, and the guest access. If I want to allow people from outside my course site to join, I can. I can enable this guest access. I can choose the role they're going to join in. So if I'm having a guest speaker who's maybe an instructor from a different institution, maybe I'll let them join as a moderator. Although this role will apply to anybody who uses guest link. So be a little careful. If you share this guest link out, you, it can be shared with other people. And it is also anonymous, just like the dial-in number. So people would use this. They'd enter their own name. And you have to be a little careful with that. But that is the overall settings. And again, we'll talk a bit more about some of these settings in comparison between course room and sessions in the next video.